So in today's build video, we are going to be showing you a step-by-step build-along video for our NEMA 23 lead screw actuator with our XL gantry plate. So as you can see, this is a super nice actuator. We definitely have a rigid design here with our extra large plate. It's perfect for any type of building project. As you can see, this basically consists of our modular designs with our machines. So any type of CNC machine is going to be made up of different actuators. So this is a perfect example of what you can do with Open Build's modular system. The sky's the limit with this stuff, guys. It's definitely super fascinating. Once you get into it, you're going to learn more and more about how these systems work and how these different parts go together to create whatever you can dream of. So definitely looking forward to starting this build with you guys. Let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so on this first step we are going to be assembling our extreme wheel. So we're going to need our extreme wheel shell along with two of our open builds bearings, two of our precision shims, and one of our nylon hex nuts. And this will all be included in the kit. So go ahead and empty out the contents and we're going to go ahead and assemble this wheel. Taking one of your open builds bearings, we're going to place it in the top, snap it into place, rotate the wheel, and add your precision shim. And then take your additional open builds bearing and close it in, just like so. So now we're going to assemble our additional three wheels. And once we get that done, we'll move on to the next step, guys. Alright guys, moving forward here, we are going to be assembling our anti-backlash nut block to our extra large gantry plate. Of course we're going to need our extra large gantry plate, one of our anti-backlash nut blocks, two of our nylon hex nuts, two of our 3mm aluminum spacers, two of our precision shims, and two of our 20mm screws. So first we're going to go ahead and take notice to our center holes here and where we're going to be placing our anti-backlash nut block. So in this case we're actually going to be placing them in these two holes. So we're going to go ahead and run both of our 20 millimeter screws through the plate. Just go ahead and rotate this around. And we're going to go ahead and take our 3 millimeter aluminum spacers and place them on top of the screws along with our precision shims. We're going to take our anti-backlash nut block, we're going to place it on top with our hex design holes facing upwards towards us. This is where our hex nuts will fit in place. Alright, so go ahead and take your nylon hex nuts and we're going to go ahead and place them into the grooved holes here. Then we're going to go ahead and tighten the system down. Alright, now once you have that tightened down, we're going to go ahead and put this system to the side for now and we'll move on to our next step. Alright guys, moving on to the next step here, we are going to be assembling our wheels to our extra large gantry plate. So in this step we are going to take our screws and place them into each, each one of these holes here on the ends of the plate. We're also going to need four of our extreme wheels, four of our precision shims, four of our nylon hex nuts, two of our six millimeter eccentric spacers, two of our six millimeter aluminum spacers, four of our 27 millimeter screws, and of course our ball driver. So to get started here guys, we're going to go ahead and place our screws into each one of these holes. Noticing that the top three holes here are going to be for our centrics, so we're going to go ahead and place one more screw here on this top left corner. And then the bottom two holes here for our fixed side, which will be for the aluminum spacers two more on each corner. Let's go ahead and rotate the plate around. Now that we have our screws in place here, we're going to go ahead and start our stacking configuration. Working on the fixed side first, we're going to go ahead and take our 6mm aluminum spacers and place them on the screws, followed by our precision shims. And then we're going to go ahead and add our extreme wheels. If you have a situation like this where your precision shim is caught in the middle of the wheel, all you have to do is simply roll it onto the screw and the center of gravity will find its place. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and cap it with our nylon hex nuts here. Alright, so now that side's done, we're going to go ahead and move on to our centric side. So let's go ahead and take our centric spacers. Taking notice to our stamp portion here that has the 6mm sign here, we're basically going to point that away from our fixed side because it works as a cam as you adjust it. So it's going to tighten the wheels to the track. So make sure that you place that away from the fixed side. Alright, we're going to go ahead and add our precision shims next and our extreme wheels. 
And once again, we're going to go ahead and cap these with our nylon hex nuts. That way we can turn this assembly to the side and tighten it down properly. Alright, so now let's go ahead and tilt this system to the side. And let's go ahead and grab our ball driver and spanner wrench. And let's tighten the system down, guys. Alright, perfect. That looks great, guys. So it's coming along nicely. We have our gantry plate pretty much assembled. So we're going to go ahead and put this to the side for now. And we'll move on to our next step. Alright, guys. Moving forward here to the next step. On this step, we are going to be adjusting our eccentric spacers to our 500 millimeter C-beam. So in this step, we're going to go ahead and grab our assembly that we have thus far and our 500 millimeter C-beam along with our spanner wrench. So we're going to go ahead and take our C-beam along with our gantry system that we have, and we're going to go ahead and run this onto the track with our anti-backlash nut block in the middle here. So it's going to run in between the channel here of your C-beam, as you can see. So go ahead and slide that on. If you have any resistance, then you're going to have to adjust your eccentrics. So we're going to go ahead and adjust those now. I have a little too much preload. So now that's going to slide right onto the C-beam. And as you can see, we have movement in our gantry system. We don't want that, so we're going to go ahead and adjust our eccentrics and tighten these wheels down to our tracks. Let's go ahead and grab our spanner wrench and tighten down these eccentrics. Rotating them all in the same direction. That's nice and tight. All right, that's perfect. So once you actually get the wheels tightened to the track, you should have enough rigidity to keep the wheel in place, but also have movement on your track. So as you can see, I can spin this out a little bit. That's exactly what you want. It's still a little bit stiff, but not too tight. Definitely don't want to put too much torque on there, guys. You can mess up your wheels. So that's perfect, guys. As you can see, this moves nice and smooth. That's looking really sharp, guys. Good job so far. So let's go ahead and put this to the side and we'll move on to our next step. All right, guys, so on this step, we are going to be assembling our C-beam end mounts to our assembly that we have thus far. So we're gonna need our assembly as well as two of our C-beam end mounts, eight of our 20 millimeter screws and our ball driver. So let's go ahead and get started. Taking one of our C-beam end mounts, we're gonna go ahead and place it here on the end of the C-beam, making sure that the recessed side is facing inward. That'll be for placement of the bearing for our lead screw. So let's go ahead and place that. Taking our 20 millimeter screws, we're gonna go ahead and thread those into the C-beam. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and tighten that down now. All right, perfect. So now we're gonna go ahead and rotate this assembly around. And we're gonna do the same process for this other side. So let's go ahead and get that done, guys. All right, excellent. So that's looking really sharp, guys. We have our end mounts in place here. So our system is coming along great. We're gonna go ahead and put this to the side for now and move on to our next steps. All right, guys, moving on to the final step here. We are going to be assembling our lead screw to our actuator as well as mounting our motor to our actuator. So in this step, we're gonna need our 500 millimeter lead screw, one of our NEMA 23 motors, two of our 40 millimeter aluminum spacers, two of our 50 millimeter screws, one of our flexible couplings with a quarter inch bore, two of our eight millimeter shims, two of our eight millimeter lock collars, and two of our eight millimeter bearings. In addition to that, we're gonna need our tooling, which is our ball driver set here, which you can purchase on Open Build's parts store. Definitely recommend it, guys. Very useful tool set you can use on all kinds of your builds. So definitely recommend it, guys. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. Taking our motor, we're gonna go ahead and attach our flexible coupling. Paying attention to the quarter inch bore, this is going to attach to our motor shaft and the opposite end, which is slightly larger, is gonna be for our lead screw. So let's go ahead and place this on top, making sure that our set screws align with the flat part of the motor shaft. We're gonna go ahead and tighten those down. All right, we're gonna go ahead and rotate this back around, and then we're gonna tighten down these additional screws here on the flexible coupling. 
We're going to leave this top screw here loose because this is going to attach to our lead screw. All right, so that looks great, guys. So let's go ahead and mount this to our C-beam end mount. As you can see, we have two threaded holes here on the bottom for the purpose of mounting our motor. So we're going to go ahead and take our two 50 millimeter screws and place them here in our bottom corners of the motor. Then we're going to take our 40 millimeter aluminum spacers and place them on top of the screw like a sleeve. And what I generally do is I'll line each screw with the holes here and I'll tighten one down first and then work on the other. Alright, perfect. That looks great guys. Our motor is secure onto our C-beam end mount. As you can see it is rigid. Definitely a good design. So we're going to go ahead and take our lead screw, which we're going to feed through on the opposite side of the actuator. So let's go ahead and rotate the system around. And we're simply going to feed the lead screw through the end of the C-beam end mount. And we're going to add our additional parts, starting with our 8mm bearing, our 8mm shim, and our lock collar. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and make sure that these parts all stay towards the end of the C-beam end mount. And we're going to feed the lead screw through to our anti-backlash nut block. And we're going to rotate our lead screw through the anti-backlash nut block to the other side. Alright, so as you're feeding it through, we're going to pay attention to the other end of the lead screw because we're going to add additional parts to the opposite end of the actuator. So just continue to rotate that through. All right, perfect. So now we're going to go ahead and add our additional parts, starting with our lock collar, our 8mm shim, and our 8mm bearing. All right, so let's go ahead and rotate this all the way to the opposite end of the actuator. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and turn this system to the side here. So the lead screw is going to attach to our flexible coupling here. As you can see, it's protruding out of the end mount now. We're going to go ahead and continue to rotate that until it gets into the flexible coupling. And you want to make sure it locks into place, and you'll see the flexible coupling rotate. That's exactly what we want, guys. So on the opposite end here, you can see that the lead screw is flush to the C-beam end mount. That looks great. So let's go ahead and take our parts and lock them into place. Remember our recessed hole here on the CB mem mount is going to accept the 8mm bearing. So now all we have to do is tighten down our lock collar. Alright, perfect. So now we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side here. Make sure it's nice and tight and if you get any movement on your lock collar, it could be because of the pitch of the threads on the lead screw. So just adjust it around and tighten it down and it'll find its place to seat. So as you can see there's no movement here in my lock collar. That's exactly what we want guys. So now let's go ahead and tighten down our flexible coupling. Alright, that's perfect guys. We have rotation in our gantry system as you can see. That looks awesome guys. So now you have a NEMA 23 lead screw actuator with our extra large gantry plate. That looks excellent guys. Great job.